Hi, Peter again from Record. Um, on the next few videos, uh, I'll we'll probably do um, at least two videos on this, the BS250 here. So this is the, one of the smaller bandsaws in our of bandsaws. Um, so what I'm going to do before I start it up, I'm going to show you how to set the guides, the table, and uh, try and get the best out of your machine. So before you actually do anything, the machine's unplugged. I'm going to take you through some basics of how to set the guides and introduce the machine to you and um, hopefully then you can get the best out of your machine. So first of all what I'm going to do and only for the, um, the sake of introduction to the machine is take the bottom guard off the cover the guides down below I'll show you how to get, gain access to these as you can do your setting and these two basically are the same uh, just in a kind of a reverse sort of fitting so you've got two bearings at the side top and bottom and then at the back you've got your rear bearing that takes the thrust of the blade and the same below so basically these bearings need to be set up so as they're uh, clear of the blade initially when you start the machine. So it's best to open these up and move them out of the way as you introduce yourself to the machine and get used to the settings of it. So, so initially just move those aside. So if you undo the screw here these move, move across and the same at the top. You can move those backwards and forwards. I don't know if you can actually see that. There's movement on the side of it. And the same with this one. You can move that backwards and forwards. Or take it out. Just move it away for the time being. And the same with the rear one. that moves backwards and forwards. So open the doors, we've got a time delay um, lock on the doors now so it's ideally when you open the door the machine has come to rest. There's also a micro switch interlock so as you can't start the machine with the doors open and same down below. And at the rear here, you've got the uh, your outlet for your waste, and that's supplied with it, and that's fitted on there. Importantly, that's got a cover inside, because so you can't get your fingers inside. And that fits on there. You can either put a hundred mil hose on there, or another adapter onto there. So going back to the guides again, if I do this one, move that back. So what that gives me then is access to put my blade on. So the bottom band wheel is driven from the motor and you've got a drive belt. That should have enough tension in there so as it doesn't slip but it doesn't need to be uh, really solid tight. You need a little bit of flex in there. And you need an extractor on the machine otherwise what you're going to get is lots of chippings or waste in there and this is a poly V belt. Um, but if you don't use an extraction or keep it clean, what you'll find is this will wear, they get full of muck, it'll spin and slip, and you'll need a new belt. To tension the drive belt, you've got a motor on the back here, and you've got two cap screws here. So if you undo those a little bit, you can, if you need to, put a little bit of tension on, or if you need to replace a blade uh, belt at some time, you can take the tension off, pinch it off, take your uh, drive belt out. And to do that you need to remove the little grub, uh, circlip on here, take that off and then that band wheel will come off. So before we actually fit um, a bandsaw blade, what I'll do is put that in and that should tension it. So this wheel is driven from the motor 
that's quite rigid as you see. But your top wheel is actually a little bit floaty moving around. And this is the wheel that you actually tension your uh, bandsaw blade. And also you do your tracking. Now the tracking is when you line the belt, the dry, uh, bandsaw blade itself. So is it, it's approximately in the centre of the brand wheel. And we do that with the, um, the, the tracking lever which I'll show you in a second. So now we can come to putting the blade on. This lock here is for the tool arm. So if you undo that you can move this down. And ideally you want to move the tool arm down to about the centre of the band wheel to help you get the blade on. It just makes it a little bit easier to introduce. The actual blade itself, before you put onto the machine, it's always worthwhile for A, checking that the teeth are in the right direction. We want the teeth going downwards with the cut. Sometimes these are manufactured um, and when the guys weld them, when he wraps them up, he may actually put the blade inside out. So you want the teeth going downwards, like so. So it's the way with the cut. And also with a new blade, give it a bit of a wipe first before you put it on. It's, say it's been through a manufacturing process. So what you might find is you'll get a lot of muck off the blade itself. Um, good to clean it off, but it saves it actually being transferred onto your band wheels as well. Because all that will do is the dust that you're producing on the cuts will actually adhere to the wheel and that will build up over a period of time and just make the wheels a little bit mucky so keep them clean so the easiest way to put this in is actually through the top first nice and gently we've got the guides out of the way so they're not interfering so I can just put that onto there I've got a little bit of tension on first Just a little bit of tension on there yet. I haven't got full tension on there. And then just gently rotate the actual band wheels themselves. So what I'm doing is just turning that by hand to see where the actual blade's going. Now to alter the actual tracking, we've got a little lever at the back here. And the rule of thumb on this, that's the locking part there, and this is the piece you actually adjust in and out. <coughs> so you're doing opposites. So if you want to come forward with the, the, the blade, you take it out a little bit, and vice versa. And when you're doing it, just do it nice and gently at first, just to see where the actual blade's sitting on the top wheel. So this is the wheel you're altering. This one's already been factory set. So you've got nothing to do with that one down there, it's just this one. And what I need to do is go forward a little bit. So I'm just spin it nice and gently. Little movements until it's in the centre. But with the guides out of the way, I've got no interference from those. So they're not being pushed one way or the other. So first of all, set that up. And it's difficult to see in here, but... That is, that is in the centre now of the actual band wheel itself. So what I'll do next is just pinch that off and apply a little bit more tension. So I just want a pressure in there but I don't want to be able to touch the body of the, the machine with ease. So I've just got a little bit of tension on there. And the ideal thing is when this is running, that blade runs in a nice straight line. So it doesn't fluctuate. If it fluctuates, stop the machine. A little bit more pressure, try it again. Don't do it with the machine running, because if you flick your blade off, it's going to make a mess of the blade and cause a little bit of damage. So first of all, I'll just do these up. Now I've got the table and everything off, that is just so as you, everybody can see what's going on with the machine. And then I'll plug it in. So 
So I'm bring the tool on right down. If the guides are out of the way, what I can do then is switch it on. And like I say, I'm looking for that blade just to run in a nice straight line. Stop the machine, the machine will come to rest. And then just check the location again. It stayed in the same position, so I'm fit to go now. So everything I can work around is off that now. So that's okay. I can now look to introduce the guides themselves. Tools you'll need for this is a 5mm key, 13mm spanner, and a 10mm spanner. Maybe not all at the same time. So if we take this up, you can see now the actual guides themselves are not far off the position that I want them to be. By the position I need the actual teeth to be away from the guide themselves. So what I don't want to do, I'll take this one, is have the guide over the teeth because then it'll knock the set off the blade and the blade will not, it'll cut, but it ain't going to cut truly. It's just going to go one way or the other. So it's, you're knocking your set off then because you've got a set on your on the actual teeth itself, a parallel tough, one to the left, one to the right. So like I say, before you actually start the machine, have your guides open, then if there's a problem either way, uh, you're not going to have any problems. If you're changing a blade like for like, then you don't need to. Um, so if you're for argument's sake, we've got um, a 3.8 uh, 10mm blade on there, the guides are already set up, so you're, you're, you're just doing like for like. If you're going from a quarter blade to maybe a 3.8 10mm blade, again 6mm, whatever, open these up out the way first, so as if you put a blade in there, if it's a smaller blade, it's not going to run back inside of the guides and damage the, the blade itself, and that way you're, you're going to get the best easy usage on there, because also if you've got a blade that's running against one of the guides and you're trying to do your tracking, it's not going to move, so it, you're, you're, you're you'll just have these running. What you want to avoid is these spinning around. So it should just move up to it. So look this one, I say it's not far off. If anything, if I lock the dip the tall arm off, it's in its working position. And what I can do then is just undo this a little bit. Then I can move this unit backwards and forwards. So that controls the side of these. So what I'm aiming to do is move that forward so as the actual guide is just behind the actual gullet of the teeth. I want the guide to just at the bottom of that the gullet there so I'm not going to come in contact with the teeth at all. So just behind. So as when the rear, rear one comes into play, it takes the thrust, so as the blade can't go off, and it also doesn't come in. The the side guides don't come into contact with your your blade. So that's about right for there. And now for the bottom one, we've got a 10 mil spanner. You can undo this, and see with the table off, it allows you to get used to the actual functions of the machine, what it can do. So again, that one's just behind. So they're not going to rub on the on the teeth and cause the teeth to go uh, blunt. And now with the side ones, with the little 5mm key again, tool arms locked off in position, undo these and just move it through and look by eye down the length of the blade. And what I don't want it to do is spin and come into contact with the blade as I'm moving it. So I don't want that to come into contact and that start rotating round. I want still a small gap in there. So 
same with the side one. So as close as possible without it actually spinning. And then the back one. Up to the back of the blade. And back off a little bit. So all this does is carries the, the weight of the cut. So when you go on to your cut, you're pushing into your material, you're actually pushing on that blade. So that's what stops the travel, the rear one. So that one's just a little bit a space behind. Now you can set it up with um, shims or something like that. I used to use a little piece of plastic. Uh, you've seen probably people using paper and stuff like that. Just maintain that small gap in there. So that's okay, and I'm travel still probably a little bit too much travel on there. I've just got a little touch on there. Because even this is as a band, it's been reduced for packaging, so it's been um, wound up. And what you can get a little bit is a little bit of run out on the blade. Also, from the guy that's manufacturing it, he's he's put it together and he's uh, welded it. But sometimes it may be a little bit out on the joint. Uh, and also where they've um, where the weld is actually taken place, you might have a high spot on there, and occasionally that might just rub against the actual bear, and you might hear that little scratching noise on there, and that's all that's from. So what we're trying to do is trying to avoid contact with the blade. At all times. So the two side ones quite easy to access. Obviously we got the that one across as well. So the acid test now is to shut the doors up nice and tightly. So I can't run my machine with the doors open. Move that down again. Lock that off. And what we're looking to say is that's a run with the same sort of noise that I had before. I've got a little bit of look of air somewhere. So we've got a little bit on the side. bottom bearing so there's a little bit of kink on the blade not a lot there's just a little bit there that's got rid of all of the little, little noises so what I've got is a little bit of side movement on the back of the blade and I'm clear of all the guys and stuff now. Just check I haven't interfered with anything at the top. The bandsaw blade is still in the same position, approximately centre um, of the wheel itself. Uh, don't get hung up by a measurement or anything else like that. Uh, band wheels are got a, um, each band wheel's got a tire on there, and the, the the it's got a crown to the top of the tire. So we're approximately putting the say that's the band wheel tire. We're putting the plate approximately in the centre. So that's that's all. You don't have to do it to a measurement. What we don't want is the teeth forward, um, and be careful with the smaller blades as well. Um, you get those set up nicely, same with any of the blades really, but 
just take your time and it should have a nice little clean setup like that. So that's a little bit of an introduction to putting a blade on, doing your tracking and then doing your guides. So uh, on the next one I shall introduce the table, setting the table up um, and just going through the bits and pieces that come with the machine. So I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers. See you soon.